Hello GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we are just digging deeper and deeper into a GED favorite subject known as graphing lines. So let's take a look here. It says create a table of values. This is a table of values and use it to graph a line y equals negative 3x plus 1. So I hope that you notice even if lines freak you out that you've been given an equation. Look at that, an equation. And if there's anything we know about algebraic equations and expressions, it's that when we have a known value, something we know, we can plug it in, we can substitute it in. So this is what I want to point out to you. Even if you don't know anything about lines, you ought to be able to finish your table of values because look what this table of values consists of a bunch of x's those are all x's which means each or any one of those could be plugged in for x so we could see what happens to y let's give it a try let's try plugging in first negative one again this is just the algebraic concept of substitution super simple so what did I do I rewrote my equation and the only change that I made was I turned x into a negative one notice that I put that negative one in parentheses why because I know that when negative three and x are shoved together like this with nothing between them they're multiplying and so I use those parentheses to say I'm gonna do negative three times negative one and now you just simplify now again if you have a calculator, you can do this work in your calculator. Your calculator can handle this entire right-hand side, this entire expression. It has no letters left in it, so your calculator can handle. But I'm going to do it by hand because I know my negatives. So a negative times a negative is a positive, and 3 times 1 is 3. So I get positive 3. And if I'm going to still take that positive 3 and add 1, I'll get y is equal to 4. So what did I just find out? I found out that when I turned x into negative 1, my y is a 4. Again, when I turned x into negative 1, my y is a 4. Great. Now you might say to yourself, well, what about the other ones? Well, you just keep plugging them in. What would happen if I turned x, instead of turning it into negative 1, I turned it into 0? Again, now I'm plugging in 0 into this original equation. So a negative 3 times 0 is just 0, and if I add 1 to that, I get 1. So what happened when I made x into 0? Well, y became 1. Let's keep trying that. Now I'm going to take that exact same equation and I'm going to see what happens if I turn x into 1. So I plug in a 1 where there used to be an x. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And if I were to add 1 to that, I would get negative 2. Again, your calculator can handle if you hate uh, the... Um, negatives. But I just ended up with all these x, y values. Now students freak out here. Well, okay, I could handle the substitution, but how do I graph the line? Uh, guys, remember that anytime you have x and y values, you have points. They might not look like it, but each one of these is a point. That's an x value and a y value. That's a point. That's another x value and a y value. That's another point. And there's another x value and a y value, and that's a point. So how are you going to put this on a graph? You're going to start by putting those points down. So let's try the first point, the point negative 1, 4. So remember that your horizontal movements are your x movements. Uh, you're going left, right. And your vertical movements are your y movements. You're going up, down. So this tells me to go negative 1 in the horizontal direction. So I'm going to go negative 1 in the horizontal direction. And then it tells me to go 4 in the vertical direction, so I'm going to go up 4. And all I'm going to do after making those movements, I put little arrows down there so you could see my movement, but I'm just going to drop down a point. So I won't actually leave these arrows on my graph. So the point negative 1, 4 ends me up right here. Again, I went 1 in the negative horizontal direction and 4 in the positive vertical direction. Negative 1, 4. And we'll do the same thing with this point. That's another point. So 0, 1, what am I saying with 0? I'm saying don't move horizontally from the origin, from the center. So I won't move left, right, but I will move up. I'll move up 3, up, I'm sorry, up 1. I was circling 1 and saying 3. So that's my second point there. And don't get distracted by my little extra dot that I was using to talk about this. Okay, and the next point I'm going to graph is 1, negative 2. So again, I'll start with my x movement, 1, and then I'll go down to negative 2. 
And you can see that those three points are in a line. They better be because that's how you graph a line using points. You just connect the dots. And I did. I connected the dots. Makes me want to sing a little song from the 90s with Pee Wee Herman, but I won't. Um, you lucky things. So uh, what do I do to use a table of values to graph a line? Well, the first thing I did was completed my table. And then when I was done with that, I put those uh, points that I found on the graph. And then you just literally connect the dots. La 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 la. <laughs> Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my very best to answer it.